okay, ballet four five. I know that I've been a little bit silent uh, so far about your Dance for June performance, but here you go. Uh, <coughs> since you guys all have flower costumes, um, I was going to do this song um, for June anyway. So the only thing that has really changed is like what I'm doing choreographic wise because it's not like I can do anything big like what we did for Flower Waltz since I can't have all of you in one place uh, for like formations. So um, what we are doing is the flower, uh, like the, the flower waltz dance from Sleeping Beauty um, is not actually called the flower waltz. Uh, so this is the Sleeping Beauty waltz that is done. Um, I think the last time we did this was back when we did Sleeping Beauty, back in 2011. And we only had three girls who danced it, and I was one of them. It was my first ballet dance ever. Um, so this is the Sleeping Beauty Waltz. Um, here's the music. So then you can hear it, kind of. Hopefully you can hear it. Uh, this is like the intro part. Uh, and I haven't decided if we're going to have like pictures of you guys in your costumes or something, like panning during this intro part so then they can see like who is in this class. Be like, here are all the dancers. Um, even if you like can't send me a video or something, I can still have your photo in it. And then there's this. And then it starts. Okay. So this is what you guys will be dancing to, um, and I will be giving you a series of videos of, okay, here is uh, whatever counts of choreography that I want you each to do. Here is the next set of choreography counts. Um, and um, for these video submissions, you don't have to worry about being in the correct spot in the music, I will try and give you, okay, start here, and this is what I'll be going to like second wise, just so you have it, so you can do it with the correct chunk of music, so then you can get timing correct, but for the video when we compile it all together, we will actually be removing your sound and overlaying a soundtrack over all of it so then we also don't have to worry about like background noises because like as you can tell here at the studio it is quiet but you can also get uh, cars passing by and stuff like that that will be picked up from the video quality and so we are planning on like removing the audio that is with each video with the ballet classes and overlaying just a single soundtrack so then also we don't have like the chunky skippy portions of the music going from video to video and then everybody has different um, volumes that their music will be at. So this will just keep it at a very nice consistent. Um, sorry for the length of this video for just like explaining what your dance is. I figured it would be easier than me typing it all out and then you having to read it. And then you also get to listen to the music. I will be putting it in your Spotify playlist because I have a playlist for this class um, and I will be placing it at the end and it is, um, it's a very long title and it's Tchaikovsky's Sleeping Beauty are the first words um, but that's what it says for all of the ones in that album but it is Tchaikovsky's The Sleeping Beauty OP66 Act one, uh, the spell, which is like, that is the scene, essentially the spell, number six, waltz. That is the entire title. And it's not like you're gonna have to search it on Spotify or anything. It will be linked in the Spotify account or in the Spotify playlist that will be linked to your um, class assignments. Um, I'm going to 
make some more videos of your choreography so you guys can start learning that. Um, one of them will require you to have more space because it will be a series of like, you'll do some fuetes and you'll do some torsetes, which is great because we were working on those at the end of fall term and I've been having you work on them this spring term if you've had room. Um, but so you know now, and I did say it in this last week's assignment, that you will be doing fuetes and torchetes um, for your um, video recording for class, uh, for the recital. So if the biggest space that you have access to is like your backyard, um, please do not wear your ballet shoes out there, obviously. If you have a nice enough ground, you can totally do it barefoot. Um, just make sure that it is nice enough outside so you don't get like too dirty. Um, so you can totally do that if you need to dance in your, in your yard. Um, be careful if you're on concrete, as we say, um, dancers aren't, don't like to dance on concrete because it's not as supportive, um, and it doesn't give as much or really at all when you're jumping and landing, um, and it's very hard on your bones and your joints. So preferably like grass or like a carpeted area if you have room inside would be awesome. Um, but hopefully we'll get some sunny days and you can work on and do some choreography um, recording of you outside um, if you have that space. Um, if you don't have the space um, shoot me an email, even if it is nice outside and, and you just don't, you don't have the yard space, you don't have the space in your house, you don't have a place that you can go, um, like a garage or something to be able to record these. Um, let me and or Stephanie know, cause this might also impact Stephanie's ballet class. Um, and we will figure out something, we'll brainstorm something, um, because we want you all to be included in this dance because this is your class dance and we'd like to see all of your faces and be able to post everything. So, um, yes, just let me know.